So, <clears throat> good morning. Clock has passed 11. So, I think we'll start. My name is Erik Söderbeck. Uh, I work as head of the diagnostic sales at ClueCore. And I will present in this webinar the ClueCore Insight, give you an introduction to ClueCore Insights that includes also the Fusion Workbench. And we will focus on the Fusion Analysis in this webinar. Uh, and I will describe uh, first the presentation just giving you the background that Cluco developed software for transcriptomic data analysis uh, for cancer precision and companion diagnostics. Um, this is quite recently started, so the background of Cluco is that it was started 2007. Uh, it has had during the years developed uh, software, particularly for visualization, uh, of results from big data analysis uh, in, in uh, bioinformatic analysis. <coughs> so it's particularly for visualization of complex data that is the strength of the company. And since it was started, it was a software called Klucor Omics Explorer that was developed, uh, which is uh, for research use. And it's a global reach uh, where the major universities, both on the American side and the European side, and also in Asia, are using the software uh, with a lot of industry customers as well. But this is solely for solid for uh, research use. Uh, and the the new is that Glucor uh, is developing software then for precision and companion diagnostics. Um, as I said, what we'll present today is that we can provide comprehensive gene fusion analysis, uh, but also AI-based, so artificial intelligence-based machine learning analysis models for ca cancer patient classification. So what Glucor is focusing on is RNA-seq analysis. And the reason for this is that uh, there, there are plenty of uh, companies that has developed DNA workflows, and that's the first wave of cancer molecular diagnostics as we see it. So what we focus on is for RNA. So here we can do gene, gene expression profiling and gene fusion detection by RNA sequencing of mRNA. Uh, and this is then the focus of, of ClueCore. And the importance of expression profiling, uh, what we uh, can give as example, what we are working on is, for example, with a um, BCPALL, so acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is a typical children leukemia uh, version. And here we have a validated uh, model already developed, which is the first uh, analysis models we are using in Klucor Insights and Klucor Diagnostics. Uh, so BCPALL, uh, it's uh, quite rare disease if you look at the, the whole population. The bigger is uh, acute myeloid leukemia, AML, and there we are developing a model. Also prostate cancer and bladder cancer um, and lung cancer should be added to this list as well. And all of these expression profiling is of importance for uh, the clinical handling of patients. And we, we go out from B, WHO guidelines that we discuss with, with the clinicians. So key opinion leaders about how, how we should develop these uh, models. Gene fusions are of increasing importance as well. And these can aid diagnosis and disease subclassification. And particularly they can also provide risk stratification of patients. And there are specific drugs uh, uh, coming out on the market which targets chimeric proteins that are a result of the gene fusion events. And will full RNA-seq transcriptomics and ad analysis, we can call all fusions and clinically annotate these. So there is a list to the right here. There are some uh, a list of drugs that target in specific gene fusions, and these were then developed from the beginning of, of 2000 and onwards. So the graph on the left just shows the increase of the number of approved drugs by EMA. EMA. <clears throat> 
And here it's quite obvious that if you are targeting these specific fusions, it is always new fusions that needs to be targeted. So Glucor has taken the, the way of using full RNA transcriptomics data for unbiased fusion analysis. So we are developing two solutions actually. Uh, it's Kluger Insights that offer re research and development, and this software is available today. And we're also developing Kluger Diagnostics, and this is done in a process of, of um, IVDR compliancy. So we are working on, on the regulatory approval process for IVDR. And this enables them that we have a research and development, development tool that is more flexible, and the diagnostic tool that later will become available uh, will be a locked version aimed for in vitro diagnostics. And put this software into context. Uh, so as seen on the right, it says D D data input. So we have a standard operating procedure to generate RNA-seq data or aligned BAM files. And these are taken into our software together with information about the patient and also results from fusion callers. And here we can we um, uh, can handle uh, fusion caller four different fusion callers and their result files. And these these uh, files are then taken into the Kluger software. Uh, the user chooses which analysis models to use. So I have listed here the, the models we are have developed or are in, in developing right now. And then the user press go and you have the analysis done and you get classification model, model uh, results together with gene fusion uh, modeling as well. And then we create a report from this. This is quite interactive in the research use only software, Kluger Insights, but in the diagnostic IVDR compliant version later coming, that will be a locked configuration that only creates a report from the analysis. And the results from this shows about like this. And I will go in, I will make a demo of the, <clears throat> of the software. And here, there you will see that the output is uh, of the of the analysis is in three parts. So it's a vis visualization part. We have a specific gene fusion workbench that works together with the visualization, and then we have a report as well. And the report is generated automatically, but in the research tool, it's possible to change and it's quite customizable uh, what comes out from the results. And the models we are discussing uh, are developed in collaboration then with, with key opinion leaders. So the start of this is uh, that we, we initiated with an acute lymphoblastic leukemia model for children leukemia. And this was uh, together with Toas Fioretos, which is one of the co-founders of Klukor and is active at Lund University. And we also working on an AML uh, classifier uh, for this. This is then based on full transcriptomic data. And then we had a, a suggestion from a professor in, at Semmelweis University in Budapest, so Chaba Böder, and he asked if we can handle the um, aluminum pan cancer uh, RNA panel. So this covers about 1500 genes, and we are trying to develop then a model based on that uh, panel as well, and we'll see what the outcome of that will be. As seen below, so we are working on a lung cancer panel together with Albert Stenzinger in Heidelberg and also a bladder cancer model uh, together with a group in, in, at Lund University. And recently we also had um, a grant to develop a cardiovascular disease panel, but that's very early stage. So the biology of the, of the diseases are discussed with a partner. Uh, and they provide also the reference samples uh, sequence results that our specialist then can build the classifier from. 
And when we have optimized the classifier, we can validate it and bring it in then to, to clue core diagnostics. Uh, and that, of course, has a lot of, of documentation for the IVDR compliancy. Uh, but for the research setting in clue core insights, uh, it's that we provide the verification scheme and we can also validate it together with uh, uh, the partners we are collaborating with. So the way we develop these uh, models is that we use uh, data from the reference samples from the partner, as seen to the left here. Our experts look in and optimize uh, models based on the reference sample data. And then we use uh, the most relevant statistical tool that our specialist can, can find for the particular data set. And using machine learning models, we can train and fine tune uh, the models then. And we can verify it and validate it then together with a partner. The architecture makes it quite flexible. So the green part below indicates that it's a, a software platform called then Kluger Insights and the diagnostic platform, of course, Kluger Diagnostics. And into this, we can plug in one or many model for analysis. And the same models can, apply, can be applied then both to the research software and to the diagnostic software. So it's quite modular in design, and it also allows us to go from RNA sequencing if our partners then want to develop um, uh, models based on DNA or proteomics or any other kind of data, we can bring in that as well. And we have the competence and uh, software tools for that as well internally. And the benefits of this architecture is that we can standardize uh, we can reuse models. It's easy to, to um, update models with new findings. We don't need to change the, the concept of the platforms. So it's only the models that need to be changed. And this, of course, make it short uh, term to go, go to the market with these models. And we also think that we can go into a variety of, of customers and partners then, so like hospitals, of course, uh, for the uh, diagnostic settings we are developing right now, but we also can lie it with instrument chemistry and service providers for this. Together with pharma and biotech, so we see that also companion diagnostics would be of interest for this software. And we also have an application landscape with uh, possibility to go into different diseases with different types of data and we have multi-omics support for the development. Okay, so that being said, uh, I wanted to do a, a tour on the software uh, and I have a demonstration data set. Uh, it's a patient sample and it has been subsampled uh, because I'm using a laptop. Uh, so we have taken away about 90% of the reads so it's 10% left, and that means that I can, in reasonable time, do the analysis on my laptop and show you how it works. The full data set on my laptop takes a little bit more than five minutes. This will take a little bit more than one minute. But it's a real sample, and I will use the, uh, the model we've developed for acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. And as a background on that, I will show you also what, uh, uh, yeah, the context again. So the upstream from sample handling to alignment and fusion detection is a standard workflow, standard operating procedure based on standard kits and standard secondary analysis of RNA-seq data. And this is validated using the Illumina TrueSeq RNA library prep. Uh, we can also uh, use um, stranded, choose stranded uh, in this workflow. And if there's any interest for other kits, it's possible to develop that as well, but it needs some hands-on for verification that it works. Okay, uh, so the model as such gives six uh, different classes of ALL. 
it's, it's based on that and that, that is from considering um, WHO guidelines uh, and other guidelines as well uh, taking into account uh, what is needed for clinical handling of patients and as you see to the right we we verified the performance of this model and it's um, close to 100% uh, accurate uh, with the data set that we have access to. Okay, look, uh, let me switch to the software. This the, uh, is the uh, inter, let me take away this. So. <clears throat> So the user interaction is from the screen. Uh, when you open the software, it gives you the possibility to add the necessary files and it's three, three files that are required. So first we add a sample information file and I have a demo set then from a certain patient sample. So I add that. Then you choose the model you want to uh, use. And in this case, it's the ALL and I use the stranded model in this case. We need a BAM file and I take the same BAM file, the subsample then with 10% of reads left. And you need also a result from a gene fusion caller or you can also use several gene fusion callers. And in this case, I take the same sample that I analyzed with star fusion, which is one of the callers that we, uh, we support in the software. This is the only thing that the, the, the user will need to add to run the sample. You can also see on the screen that it's possible to do batch runs. So this is a simple text file where those files that are in, that should be put into a batch run is just added in a text file and, and indicated here. So now I press the run and it, the uh, analysis will start and it will take a minute. So I'll try to Bear with me while we're waiting. <clears throat> and in this case, I can also say that um, uh, this stranded model um, is just recently launched. We, we had earlier only support for the uh, TrueSeq unstranded kit. We have also the first uh, model that was tested for bladder cancer has also been included here. So we have uh, a possibility to show what the intentions are at least, but we have quite some way to go before we can have uh, anything that is of use for clinical tests. Here you see on the file also it says manage model. So as soon as we launch or update a model, it's possible to just download a file from our homepage. And then it's to include here in the manage, manage models um, tab here on the initial screen. So just a few more seconds and we should be ready with the analysis. So the uh, demand for importing data is that we say that it, it's required 20, about 20 million paired end reads to uh, guarantee the performance of the software. So now we are ready and this is what the outcome of the analysis looks like. So as I said, it's divided in three parts here. So you have a visualization part uh, where we show the results and also can interact with the results. Below that, I, we have a gene fusion workbench, which I will go in and show you more in detail. And to the right, you have the results and report. And this is a preview of that and we can change that. Um, uh, it will be changed then when we are handling things in, uh, in the software. And we can have also some customization here. You have some uh, report configuration parts here in the, in the results part. 
So starting looking at the results, first of all, uh, the classification is then the six classes is indicated here by, uh, by the colors. And you can see it in a PCA plot, first of all. Uh, so that indicates then um, the reference samples together with the classified samples sample that we are analyzing. And here you can see the context of the let me increase it a little bit in size with the, the sample that is um, classified then together with the reference samples. And as you can see, the ETV6 Run X or ETV6 Run X like group, yeah, that's the blue balls uh, together with the classified ball here, which is red. So this is to, to um, visualize that the the analysis um, the analyzed samples then group quite nicely together with a with the ATV6 Runex group. We have a probability score that shows that the ATV6 Runex or ATV6 Runex like um, sample here it's a hundred percent probability that our sample belongs to that to that group. In this case, you can also see that one of the other groups has a not a big, but a considerable bar here for the ducks for rearranged. Uh, but that is mainly because I have a subsampled, uh, subsampled sample. So the reads are not enough. If I had full reads, the 20 million reads that are um, demanded, this bar would have been much lower with a lower probability score. So that's the classification. Uh, the last part here on the visualization part to show is that we have a genome browser and this is linked then to the genome the fusion workbench. So I'll go in a little bit more to details about that. So here uh, it's indicated three fusion gene fusion events that were identified in this sample <clears throat> but that is because we have a default setting where we use databases for filtration and in this case if i click out those databases which are mittelmann and tumor fusions and we don't use any of these you will see that we have identified or the, the caller has um, has identified 22 fusions gene fusion events in this uh, sample and for all of these, you get the information if it's uh, uh, which chromosome it's located on, which gene is it's, um, uh, of course, it's where it's located, how many breakpoint reads there are for, for each of these, but also spanning fragments. And for the for the report length, we can filter out so uh, we can choose how many breakpoint reads or spanning fra fragments that are required. To, um, to report these fusions. The Mittelmann database is the one that, in, that found uh, three of these. So that means that the Mittelmann database, re oh, sorry, should bring it up a little bit more like this. So the Mittelmann database um, uh, indicates that there are publications that have shown the clinical, it has been reported uh, as clinically relevant. So if I click on the on the link here on the ETV6 Run X Fusion, I will go out on the web and I come to the Mittelman database. And here you can see the let me, you can see the um, uh, publications, and it's quite a number. It's twelve entries here, and you can get hold of the references directly that have shown clinical significance of, the, of these. So if I click one of them, you can get uh, uh, the reference in PubMed, for example, and you can click that and get direct access from PubMed about this particular publication. So this is the Mittelman database. Um, let me bring that down. So looking a little bit more into detail to this, if I want to look at the breakpoint reads or the breakpoint information about the breakpoints, I click on, on uh, one of them 
and then in the genome browser, I get detailed information about the breakpoint. So this is uh, shown then as that you have the chromosomes indicated on top. It's these, um, one of the genes is on chromosome 12, and that's the ETV6 gene. So it's indicated here the gene as well, and it's indicated where on the gene this fusion event has happened. So this indicates that the window now shows 160 base pairs. <clears throat> and if you want to, to have a more um, overview of this, you can reduce the, uh, uh, you can increase the, the covered uh, regions of the, of the chromosome. So if I stepwise go out here, you can see that you're still on the ETV6 gene. You are here on exome 5 and you can indicate there exactly where on the exome 5 that the fusion event has happened. So the ETV6 gene, you can see it's very much in the end of the gene. Uh, so the transcription is going, uh, translation, sorry, transcription is going in this direction. <clears throat> There are two events here, so that's also indicated in the um, in the list in the in the um, in the specifications down here. You can see that you have breakpoint reads, and it says six five and seventeen and eighteen. So that means that there are two fusion events, or the um, at different positions of the genes. <clears throat> so here we look now at the ETV six. If I want to look from the other gene the run X perspective, it's the same there. You have, again, we are now on chromosome 21, the run X gene, and here we cover 2.56 KB, and we are in X zone one. And you can see where it's, it's uh, located there. If I reduce, no, I increase, <laughs> and, and uh, go back to, about 100 base pair coverage here, you can see that the exact uh, reference uh, sequence, the reference genome sequence is indicated here. And your gene then what uh, is also indicated exactly how the base pairs of this. Below that you have the codon and the amino acid um, indicate, indicated here as well um, for each of these. And below that you have the coverage so you can see at the breakpoint you have, um, well, about around 10 reads covering the exact breakpoint. So it's six of, one of the one of the fusion events and it's five for the other. So it's actually 11, that 11 reads that goes through the breakpoint here. I can show from one of the other, <laughs> genes here, <clears throat> there you can see from the breakpoint that now we are on the run X gene uh, again, but in this case it's a fusion event with a KRR1 gene. And here you have a frame shift um, at the breakpoint, and that's indicated that you have these black dots in the, um, the codon uh, indicated here, and that means that you have a stop codon coming up. So the, the frame shift then caused that you have a truncated part of the, of the protein. <clears throat> if I double click this run X KAR1, you see that from the other uh, end where we look at um, the KRR1 gene, uh, it's only one, um, one fusion event from that gene gene part. And there you have then the frame shift and the stop codon. If you want to have the details of this to make, for example, um, on a, to check that you, you can verify this fusion event and want to have a, to sequence it, Sanger sequencing, whatever, PCR, you can go into the ingest tab here and you get the information of the breakpoint sequence. So here is the sequence indicated when you have the star at the, the, the breakpoint. So you can uh, use this for a BLAST search and then create a PCR assay uh, for a, a product that can be sequenced then later on. 
this information uh, about chromosome uh, location is also possible to get into the report. So let me go in there and show in the pre pre preliminary report. And here the report is intended for clinical use. So here you have the uh, the patient information coming from the patient file that we included. Uh, and the, there is a result summary here showing that the subtype based on gene expression signal for the patient is ETB6-RUN-X or ETB6-RUN-X alike with confidence level 100%. The following gene fusions have been de detected. And then we have the three fusions that were filtered out using the, the Mittelmann database. We can also add in the report all gene fusions. So here to the right, there is a report configuration. So if you want to, to have information about all fusions in the sample, you can click in that and you get a, a table at the, the bottom of the, of the report. So the analysis results um, in the report is shown like this. So you have the etv 6 run x with a probability score of 100%. You had a DUX4 rearranged class, which had a probability of 5%. And as I said, this is quite high. So if we would have had a full RNA-seq sample uh, data set, this would have been lower. But the others then are, are very low or zero. <clears throat> So here is indicated and for the gene fusions, you get the chromosomal positions of uh, each of these events. So you have the, the position on chromosome A and on chromosome B. And here it's indicated that you actually have two fusion events for the same, um, in this case, run X on chromosome 21. And the same for the run X KRR1, where the KRR1 has two uh, fusion events. If we look at the report, uh, this is customize, customizable, as I said. Uh, what we have set up here is that you ha always have quality metrics of the sequence uh, to be documented. So how many, how many reads and how many <coughs> reads have mapped. Uh, you also have other quality scores here, and you can see that normal cell score and local outlier factor are indicated as a warning, which is yellow, and red, which means that this sample would not have been <coughs> um, gone through the, the quality metrics. But again, this is based on that you only have 10% of the reads, otherwise it would have been in the green area for this sample. You also get metrics about um, the, if you have strandedness, you get about forward and reverse reads from uh, the stranded uh, sample as well. Then we have in this case then um, the bar, uh, bar diagrams indicating the probability scores. And again, we have a, little, a bigger um, PCA plot to indicate that our classi <coughs> classified samples groups very nicely with the ETV6 run X or ETV6 run X like um, reference samples. And then it's the description of the analysis. And if I click in all gene fusions, you will find that at the bottom of the report, let me bring it down you can have all fusions with the information about positions as well uh, and the QC scores of this, how many spanning fragments, breakpoint reads and so on. And here it's indicated that we used star fusion but we also <coughs> we are um, uh, excuse me we are supporting uh, three other fusion callers as well uh, and these can be, well, these are Star Fusion, Ariba, Fusion Catcher, and Manta from Illumina that we can support. 
and three of these can be chosen to improve or I would say secure the results from the fusion calling. So three of them can be imported into one sample analysis uh, to ensure that you really have the accurate data from fusion calling. If I change anything in this setting here, for example, if I go here, if I go back and I made some changes, like I swing this around and want to present it in another way, if the report is intended for a clinician um, to be shown here. Now you see I change this and I update the report. The pictures describing the classification here changes with this. And that's the same for other parts that when I change things, if I update the preview, it will also be updated in the report. And the end, when I'm done with this, I, I create a PDF based on this, the report I set up. And that can then be handled in, in a hospital's general handling of, of data. Okay, that was about what I intended to show here. It's just uh, uh, an initial visualization of what we can do in the Kluger Insight with the work, uh, Fusion Workbench. But as I said, this was then chosen uh, as an ALL <coughs> classification analysis where fusions are also analyzed. The software can also be handled to only for fusion analysis. If you don't want have an ALL sample, but want to analyze fusions from other samples, other types of samples, the software can be used for that as well uh, without the classification of ALL. So we have a model for a fusion analysis separately. Uh, and there we can use either HG19 or HG38 reference data sets for the fusion analysis.